TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Remember, make sure you lock down on Twitch.com with me, man. The, just, the username is right there. If you ever don't see me on any other platforms, you'll always see me on Twitch. You feel me? Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon, and we do got merch as well. The link to all of this is down in the description. Uh, this is my warning. And this is copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Let's get into this. This is Benefits Britain on the Yorkshire Dole. All right. You know I like the benefits, man. I like to, I like to see the struggle. Um, you know, i not saying I like to see people struggling. I like to see how people overcome or deal with their struggle because I had to deal with it as well. I like to see how it's dealt with all around the world. Yorkshire, once filled with mines and mills, the engine room of the world's coal and textile industries. But all that changed. The region now has one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. True. One minute you work it, next minute you're not. Next minute picks it up, and next minute it's short. I live my life how I live. From Yorkshire's largest city, Leeds. Doesn't matter where you look, hospitals, garages, building trade, a lot of the workforce is migrants. Across the 11 miles to Bradford. A lot of people are obese because they just got to... Leeds is in Yorkshire? Yorkshire is huge. Take away and get a burger and chips for a pound. And down the A1 to Doncaster. I didn't do most stuff that you're supposed to do in school. The most I've done is lock a teacher in a cupboard and left him there. Welcome to Yorkshire. And ma'am, that's why you're on Benefit Street. <laughs> My bad, like, come on, what? Go back, what did you just say? Down the A1 to Doncaster. I didn't do most stuff that you're supposed to do in school. The most I've done is lock a teacher in a cupboard and left him there. Welcome to Yorkshire. Welcome to Dole in the Dales. You wouldn't even try in this place. Pure negativity. Half a million people live in Bradford in West Yorkshire, and over 54,000 are claiming some type of benefits. One of them is 42-year-old Adele. She's lived in Yorkshire all her life and been on benefits for most of it too. Close to two-thirds of people in Yorkshire are overweight, and mm. Adele's one of them. She's just out of hospital after having NHS weight loss surgery. The GP said to me, you're getting very obese. And I said, that's a bit cheeky. And he said, the reason why you've got so bad arthritis is because of your weight. And he said, what about a gastric band? I had all keel surgery, which is there. I've got like one scar here. I've got one scar there. And then I've got another two scars there. Well, look at me there. It's very, uh not very invasive, minor scars. I'm 30 stone there now, look at me now, I'm 23. Look at the face difference. <laughs> Adele claims nearly a thousand pounds a month in benefits. Dang. Even though her weights caused her health issues, she never saw it as a problem. It was only state funded surgery that persuaded her to take action. And I didn't lose weight because I was happy with my weight. It didn't bother me. I didn't do it to get a boyfriend or look good. I did it for health reasons because I have severe arthritis in my knees and in my shoulder. Adele's dropped 10 dress sizes, but says she misses her carefree lifestyle. I miss going out. Honestly, it's easy being big. It's fun. Eat what you want, not care, go to sleep whenever. It's fun. With my friends, I miss going like to Chinese buffets, what a cheap, what you can pay like six pounds for a sit down meal, eat all you can, because people benefit better like that and can afford that when they're on benefit. Right, so now I'm just making my dinner. <laughs> Adele's operation was supposed to change her life for the better, but a few months after having it done, she's not happy. She's had to ditch her old eating habits for a strict liquid diet. 
You know, it's like now I'm afraid. I mean, ma'am, you your life expectancy has been extended. What are you talking about? Pizza. I've got like things what I can eat, like soft cauliflower. Get thin or die capping. <laughs> My bad. I've got like roast potatoes because I can eat them with my gravy. It's all like sloppy food, you see. But these McCain wedges, what I do with them is I put them in my blender and I blend them all and put gravy with it. I get these eggs, which are dear, when I want to eat like scrambled egg. Because I keep trying to eat, even though I can't eat, I try and push myself to eat. But I'm always bloody sick. And that's it. Happy days. <laughs> Just Give it up. Isn't your arthritis feel better? Like, that's a plus. A few miles from Bradford is Leeds, where over 250,000 claimants are picking up dole money, including 59-year-old Steve. I'm Steve Turton. I've lived here uh, seven years. Steve moved to Yorkshire from Newcastle, but he's discovered the grass isn't any... Steve looked like one of them boys, don't he? ...in God's <laughs> own county. This is bed area, cooking area, That's peak, brother. You left as you come through the door. Shower and toilet through there. This the, this the this basically the me living area. Some of the places I've had hundred times better than this, even when I was living in a caravan. Long way better than this. Tidier, cleaner. Man, it's my fault for letting it get like this. He spends most of his time in the hundred and ten pound a week flat paid for by housing Oh, hundred and ten pounds, okay. Benefit. Get up on the morning, sit and watch Jeremy Kyle, flip it over, watch Bargain or whatever's on. Basically, I just most of me dime in here. Oh, take it. Should we watch an episode of Jeremy Kyle? I low key think we should. If I can find an episode, we're watching that tonight. <laughs> Not my dad out. Sit down. Room box. Room box. Okay. <laughs> That's Jake, daft dead. If he wasn't here, I'd end up going stir crazy. Because it's true what people say, dogs do become part of your family. Steve gets £144 in benefits every two weeks. Every penny counts. How old girl get a thousand? £20 minimum a fortnight on the electric. Roughly £15 a week on food. Costs about £20, £21, £22 for dog food. £23.50-ish on me tobacco. What bit I've got left. I'll have it an afternoon out or I'll have a day out down the pub. But you can't live on what you get off the benefit. All you can do is survive. Get by day to day. You should X the pub out. The day. In Doncaster, a quarter of people claiming benefits are under the age of 24. Claire's a new mom who's recently moved into a two-bedroom house after being homeless since her daughter was born seven months ago. Mm. Well, that's good. They took care of her. Two bedrooms, one for you, one for the baby, because they got to For every child, they got to have a bedroom, right? We had nowhere to go. They showed me a few houses, and I had to view that one, and then I got the keys the same day. I live on my own with my little lady. I won't change it if it will. Her smiles just want to die for in the morning. This is my everyday thing. Washing bottles, sterilizing bottles, changing bums. Claire's never worked and never lived anywhere mm. but Yorkshire. I'll come with a square bottle and shit. She receives more than 300 um, pounds a month in benefits. So she had benefit, like she was born into benefit, stayed in benefit, was raised on benefits and then received benefits. And her rent's also paid. But she says life on benefits isn't easy for a young mum. I get like 163 pound every fortnight. Then I get Kira's money as well. I find it hard because there's always something that she needs. And if she hasn't got it, then, you know, I'm made out to be a bad mum. Ow! Claire spends most of her time with best mate Danielle. What are you doing? You don't rinse the jars out. Why, I do. I don't. Not weird. I'm not. Danielle's been sent on work placements, but they haven't led to a job. I've done placements. Uh... I had one of these for my daughter. Very effective for sleep. And work experience and stuff like that. 
but they've never, like, took me on afterwards, do you know? Claire left school without any qualifications. I didn't get my GCSEs, so obviously, when it comes to a job, they ask for what GCSEs you've got. And I, I you know, there's nothing I can say. All I can say is I ain't got none. They're not going to take somebody on who's not got no GCSEs. They turned around and said to my mum that I was too thick to do it, so I just didn't go back. Wait, who I told just left you, Mum? That was too. Not going to take somebody on who's not got no GCSEs. They turned around and said to my mum that I was too thick to do it, so I just didn't go back. That kept it real, huh? I just left school and didn't go back. I didn't do my English, I didn't do my maths. I didn't do, I didn't do most stuff that you're supposed to do in school. The most I've done is lock a teacher in a cupboard and left him there. Very productive work there. Very productive. And I got excluded for that. And I just didn't go back after that. Ah, ah, cup of tea, burn me. You've just burned me. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did. 22-year-old Danielle gets £230 a month. She lives with her mum rent-free. It means she can afford to spend her benefits on the odd holiday, soaking up the sun. What? What? <laughs> We've just come back. She don't give it to her mum? From Spain in August, so... But we're going I was to go with her, but I can't afford to do it. I'm going again next year. Mallorca. The council probably watched this and took her benefits away. It's quite, it was quite nice, actually. I think I got, I had one proper piss up. Danielle's already planning her next trip abroad. I'm going to Tenerife next year, so that'll be coming out my JSA as well. I and mean, it's costing me £604 to go to Mallorca for it. It ain't costing you nothing. It's costing... <laughs> The, the 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 taxpayers. Ten of eight for ten days, all inclusive though. I pay fifty pound a fortnight when I get paid. I've worked it all out. I should be paid by May June, and then start saving up for my spending money when we go in August. But Claire hasn't left Yorkshire in thirteen years. The last time I went on holiday, I was ten years old. I've never been on holiday since. Go back to school. You got 21 time. miles from Doncaster, Selby was once known for its shipbuilding and coal mining. As the industries closed down and work dried up, more and more people ended up on benefits, including 54-year-old John. Life on benefits in Yorkshire is shit. One minute you're working, next minute you're not. Next minute picks it up, next minute it's shut. Mining's gone, industries are shutting. A lot of shops are shutting because they can't afford the rent on them. Not like it was years ago, you could walk out of a job and walk into another one straight away. John's had work on and off, but he says the changing face of Yorkshire hasn't helped him. I used to work for a sugar place, doing sugar containers and that. That's moved and houses are built on that now. Then I used to work on the boats. That's got houses on it. This is literally the same outfit I had on today. I'm gonna stop, my bad. This is crazy. I'm never... Jacket and shorts with no socks and low tops. That's what I... <laughs> ah, that's me today. I got to cut it out because this, this is a reflection. I see it now. And how I'm looking at bro is how people be looking at me, bro. He also spent 16 years looking after his mom, claiming carer's allowance. Just used to go around tidying my mom's house up, cut her grass, cook her dinners, go shopping, all that sort of stuff. And then you didn't have to sign on, you see. Saving government loads of money because you didn't have to pay for someone to go in. But you had to do like 30, I think it was 36 hours a week. That was all right, I suppose. It all sort of changed. I had to sign back on. John's mum died four years ago. Dang, right now, he collects £144 in benefits every fortnight and gets his rent paid. He says landing his dream job feels like a million miles away. I don't think I'd have any complaints if my rent was paid. Like, that's the main thing that needs to be paid. If I'm not not saying that he's choosing not to, but the other people, some of they sound like they're choosing not to work. Like, rent is paid. You're making the choice to not work. <laughs> be grateful. For me to go to work, I want a, I want a decent, decent wage. People go to work, they want decent money, so why can't I have decent money? Why can't I live like I want to be living? Coming up. Adele's dreading going back to hard to put that money in. So, baby. It's very. 
failing it. Leeds is set below the Dales in Yorkshire, where over 126,000 of those claiming benefits are signed off sick. 59-year-old Steve thinks he should be one of them. I've got a cyst on the nook of my thumb, but I'm waiting to go and get taken out. I've got nerve damage to me right lower forearm. That's resulting from an old break. I've got a chest complaint, which nobody knows what it is yet because they haven't getting me results from the x-rays. I've got three cuts on my stomach wall, which I'm going to be on medication for for the rest of my life. On the dole, Steve has to prove he's looking for work. He insists it's too much of a challenge with all his... I don't feel like that warrants what you want. Like, you can work through all of that. ...health problems. I was on PSA for nearly a year. Went for another medical, did me fit for work again. So I've had to go back on a job seekers, and I've been on job seekers now for the last three, four weeks. The medical people, so-called medical professionals, professionals, think I'm fit for work. And Mimi, I'm not a medical professional. Well, from what I heard, you are fit for work. You're talking about chest pains, but you smoking a cigarette. Like, I don't want to hear it at that point. Like, chill. Stop, I don't think I am. The first step in proving he's too sick to work is getting a temporary doctor's certificate. I was supposed to have gone up to the doctors today to get another sick, get a sick note to cover me for this fortnight, which I forgot all about. I was sitting in earlier on, and I'm thinking, I've got to do something. I've got to go somewhere today. Real life Frank Gallagher. And could I echoes remember what it was? He manages to get another appointment, but this isn't the first time Steve's benefits have been at risk. I've had one or two sanctions before because I felt that I wasn't getting taught anything. The doll sanctioned me and swearing at a tutor, so they kicked me off the course and I lost my doll for a fortnight again. And this week, he's got a new reason for needing a sick note. Over the weekend, I took a tumble off a ladder and my hips ache again. Any chance of getting in to see a doctor? Right, thanks a lot. This is me trying to go to the urgent clinic center after I called off of work to get an excuse, <laughs> to get a to get a letter of excuse. A few minutes later, he's got it. But it will only sign him off for two weeks, not permanently. Everything went okay. One sick note, brilliant result. I'm not like some blokes who try to pull the wool over the doll's eyes. I've always tried to be honest where I can. Literally trying to pull the wool over the <laughs> Only time I've taken any little white lies when I've been caught. <laughs> It's easy to get a sick note, but it's hard actually staying on the DSA. Fingers crossed, everything should be okay when I go down the doll. John's lived in Selby his whole life. He's one of 16,000 people over the age of 50 signing on in Yorkshire. He says his age makes it even harder to find work. It's very easy on benefits. If you want to go look for a job, look, yeah. you look for a job. And I'm looking for a job, but... Well, failing at the moment. The hardest thing about being on benefits, you can't go socialising as much. you just got to take a back seat and do now, really, while everyone else is going out of the weekend and having a good time. But John insists he won't just take anything that comes up. I want to go to work, but I want to work local in Selby, but it's quite hard to find a job in Selby. And if there is, to get there, you have to catch a bus and you've got to start early. So you've got to be quite picky choosy where you're working. So if you're working in Selby, it's good. But if you're working somewhere else out of the town, you, you've had it. If you've got your own transport, it's all right. I've only got a push bike, so I can just pedal somewhere, that's it. Good enough. And there are more reasons why he says finding a job is... You can ride a bike 20 miles an hour. Hard work. I can't look for a job because I've got no internet and I've got no laptop. I've applied for loads, a couple of hundred, and I've, I've never had no replies for any of them. Back in this day, wasn't there internet shops? I don't shops? even bother ringing you back or Internet something. cafes? Yeah, like so. If you face, I don't know, if it's, it's like the old days, isn't it? If your face fits and you know someone, you, you'll get a job. If you don't know them, you won't get a job. I could probably find a job, but what's the point of me coming off benefits to earn about £400? I wouldn't want to be working for less money that I'm getting now. 
born and bred in Bradford. And that's the problem. That's the problem right there. You have to start somewhere to build your resume so you can be able to get more than you would make on benefits. You know what I'm saying? You can't find work because your 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 resume is not there. It's as simple as that. Adele says despite surgery and a huge weight loss, her poor health means she still can't work. I can't work because I've got severe arthritis in both of my knees. I've got it in my left shoulder. Um, I can't walk very far. I get out of breath. My walking is severely impaired and I'm on too much medication as well. And I get out of breath and I can't walk. So what's up? She's just starting OnlyFans. Got a job am I capable of really? And at the moment, to be honest with you, with there it is. You already got half the equipment. Without swearing, I'm F U C K E D. After having weight loss surgery, Adele's lost six and a half stone, but her new life isn't what she hoped it would be. I want a big and a half stone. Set the camera up right here and just show your feet. <laughs> My bad. I'm, it's the coffee. No disrespect, but I'm just throwing ideas out there. I'm being very, and I, when I say that, I mean that respectfully. But her new life isn't what she hoped it would be. I want a big eater. I were more of a binge eater. So say if there was like a sausage roll in the fridge, I'd warm that up and eat that with a bit of ketchup. Or if there were a pot pie, I'd eat a pot pie. Or, you know, just little things like a bit of cheese on toast, you know. Stuff like that. And she reckons living on benefits doesn't help a healthy nice lifestyle. Pudding. Some people think they can just eat salad and lose weight, but it's not always the case because it's not cheap, you know? Like, if you've got to eat healthy food with a balanced diet, you're talking, like, proper, like, what do you call them, special case cereals. You're talking about yogurts that are, like, vitality yogurts or the yogurt. She's not lying about this. She's 100% right. It's much... It's much more pricier, especially in America, to be healthy than unhealthy. Drink. How can people afford that that are just on a minimum amount of money on the benefit? They don't make it easy. So this is why a lot of people in the society, <laughs> in the community, right. are obese because they just go to takeaways and get a burger and chips for a pound. See what I'm saying? Burger and chips for a dollar. Caesar salad with low-fat dressing for $17. Which one? Adele's been told to quit smoking, but claims she can't. Smoking for me at moments cheaper than actually eating, and I don't eat. My GP tells me all the time, stop smoking, I can get you on the smoking thing. You know, my smoking is my luxury. It's like you can't change someone, can you, who doesn't see the issues. See, with her excuse game is so tough. Please. Actions. I'd love to go back to work. I'd go back to work tomorrow if I could. Yeah. But I can't because I'm too medically unfit. The most I can stand up is around five minutes. I couldn't stand up in a factory packing. I'd love to do that. But I just can't. Be a receptionist. Can't. Back in Selby, John's not happy. He lives alone in a three bedroom house. But he's now been asked to pay the new bedroom tax for the extra space. It's 30 quid a month out of his 288 pounds of monthly benefits. But John doesn't think it's fair. I've got three bedrooms, one bathroom, and this is a double bedroom. This is what I pay my bedroom tax for, for an empty bedroom. How, do you, how is it not? That's pretty fair to pay a tax for a bedroom that you don't use and you don't need if now if you was a real hustler i move somebody in that thing have them pay me a hundred dollars so 30 for the tax because they don't want to know and 70 dollars for me the three bedroom house for 20 years so why should they take money out of my benefits to pay for this the council have asked him to move so a family can have the house. Why should I move? I don't want to move. I ain't going to move. It's just a stupid. Then you get taxed. Good idea. Someone's been in an office and just said, oh, we'll do bedroom tax. That's it. Just made up. Yeah, I've got a lot of clothes on gear, so I can put it anywhere I want. I can understand families want... He's coming off as such a... 
selfish person right now. In a three bedroom house. It's and just I, you. I've got a three bedroom house. I can understand that. Totally agree. But at the end of the day, build more houses and then everyone can have an house. It's a simple solution to the problem. <laughs> like he Carl feels Culkinson. he's being unfairly targeted because he lives on his own and says for families, it's easy to play the system. At the end of the day, if people haven't been on the benefit system, they don't actually understand them. Bro got a three-bedroom duplex. He got one room dedicated to a vacuum, an ironing board, and an iron ironing board. Like, bro, you clearly don't need this space. Know what you can get and what you can't get. If you've got children, you get anything. Then you don't have to go to work. You can sit at home twiddling your thumbs. It's an important day in Claire's calendar. Her benefits have been paid in. Well, today is payday. Thank God for that. We are going to get Kira's baby milk, her nappy and wipes, and her jars of food. Nice. And we're going to get our food shop, well, my food shopping, my gas and electric. But first things first, it's down to the seller to check the meters. You've got £5.13 on your electric. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, don't start having. Ah! There's a spider above my head. You've got two pound ten on it. <laughs> like go. I need to check what's that electric. <laughs> Five pound for you, it's there. You can see it. Oh. Five pound thirteen. I've just seen a spider. Yeah. I'm going. Spiders. <laughs> Does she not know how to do it herself? The teachers was right. Gas and electric are among the essentials, along with the food shop. We'll get a shopping delivered because we can't carry it all. With no transport of their own, it's a mile long walk into town. Come on, give me my Ooh. money. I don't want. You've got 183, but your available balance is 166. Doncaster has a relatively high ratio of women claiming benefits. Claire needs to make her payments last for two weeks. So she's looking for a bargain. Do you like barbecue sauce? Yeah. It's only a quid. Anything else? Wash up the quid. Yeah, I need some more of that. Wipes and wash powder. Right, so that's that one done. Best mate Danielle's taking charge of the benefits budget. Yeah. Right, so baby milk, gas, electric, some baby food. Gas, electric, baby milk. Huh. Still lose your... How much was those cigarettes that you puffing on? I'm pretty sure if you eliminate that from the budget, you get some extra money. On the weekly basis, probably. Fifty-five pounds. Really? We'll have chicken, barbecue, bacon. Shopping done. The girls decide to spend some of what's left over on a taxi back home. Hi, when's your next available taxi, please? Give me a. I'm trying. Oh, God. Uh. That's crazy. They should have just walked. waste the money. Adele is heading back to hospital. A few months after her weight loss surgery, she's now complaining of gallstones. So doctors want to try to find out exactly what's wrong. I'm packing now again because I've got to go back to hospital to sort these bloody gallstones out through the operation. I've got earphones, listen to radio, because you don't have earphones in hospital. Them tellies that cost too much bloody money. And I can't afford the bleeding teller. She gets £980 a month in benefits and disability allowance, but says it's not enough to pay for her trips to hospital. It's not fair. But... Oh, my God. The, the, the... I just watched a single mother survive off $183. And you telling me you get 1000 and you can't? Come on. Cut it out. Because, what is... like, you're on benefit. You're there all week anyway. It costs a bomb staying in hospital. When you've got to pay for TV cards, it's, what, £10 for five hours of TV? Then stop I watching TV. I that money in televisions. It should be free. If patients are poorly in an hospital and you're just laid on the bed, you know, what you're watching, you're not watching, no, are you? You're just sat there bored, so I'll just take my earphones and listen on my phone because that's all I can afford to do. Next, they'll be charging you bloody hospital, won't they, for bloody... Charging your mobile phones next time, won't they? She's signed off sick. 
She doesn't have to prove she's looking for work in order to collect her benefits. I don't sign on, but you have to let them know that if you are going to be in hospital more than a week, you have to let them know, because obviously you're not eligible for work, I don't like that, but I'm not eligible for work anyway because I'm mainstream sick. But I think I should get more money, really, than what I'm on at the moment, because it's not fair. Just sit here. My legs are hurting. Packed and ready to go, Adele leaves for the hospital. But she is hoping to... Your legs are hurting and your body is hurting because you have the extra weight on you. This is what you've said. This is what the doctors have said. You did a surgery. You lost X amount of stones. You're complaining about this surgery. You were cool with how you were before. You blend up steaks, fries, chickens, and, and things and, and test the boundaries of your goal of, of, your, of your surgery. And then you say it's not fair. I mean, yeah, if you say so, it sound right. To be home in a couple of days. Salute. Coming up, Adele comes up with... <laughs> it's estimated 109,000 people in Bradford are overweight. 23 stone Adele's already lost nearly seven stone by having a gastric sleeve. She's been back in hospital because of gallstones. Now she's back home as she wouldn't let the doctors carry out the procedure. They put the camera down, I couldn't do it. It were awful and I had to wait right till half past nine till the doctor came back and saw me. And they said, don't worry, we'll do another procedure. So then I had to wait again. Then I ended up coming home because I got pissed off. Adele says her health issues aren't her fault. She's also unhappy with the treatment provided. They, whose fault are they? Did on the NHS. I might have to go for another operation because the operation that I had first with a gastric sleeve caused me to have gallstones through the operation and I'm a bit upset about it now, to be fair. They've knackered up my body. Like a cattle market, one minute in, one minute out. And she's really not really pleased with up. anyone who'd criticise her having the surgery in the first place. It's like people had moan at me because, oh, God, she's had a gastric band because she wanted to lose weight. Why couldn't she lose weight naturally? But end it day, people who work get NHS free, don't they? If they have to go in hospital. So for now, she's sticking to... Her logic is crazy a little bit. It's a little bit wild. Her liquid diet. The menu for tonight's dinner, sugar and water. <laughs> Cup of soup, and I'm gonna have a packet of crisps as well. Because I can eat ready salt. Sorted, so that's my minestrone. That's my uh, Sunday dinner. My like reggae, reggae sauce, manny, medi, big dinner. <laughs> Looks mm. good. A few miles away in Selby. John's escaped the pressures of money, a lack of work, and potentially having to move house to spend time on his allotment. It's his own little piece of Yorkshire. This is my garden at Pimble. He has an allotment? I've been here 30 years or more. This is better than paradise. It's lovely. <sighs> Rosemary. The toilet seat. Strawberry plants in there. Bucket. it. We're going to wash it. Lovely. Mm, beautiful. Cheap. Free. The cost of the allotment comes out of John's benefits, and keeping it up to scratch is taking a lot out of his resources. It costs you about £200 to have a garden this size. By the time you've got your plants, your seeds, manure, rotivated it, dug it, it costs a lot of money. It does take... Not gonna lie, it seems like bro priorities is, is a little bit wild. A lot of work. You've got to be here all the time to keep on top of it. If it's raining and that, you get more weeds growing, and then the sun comes, it'll, the weeds grow up, so, you know, it's hard to keep on top. But he thinks putting his green fingers to work in a job isn't an option. I wouldn't be happy with a garden centre, because you'd have to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it, it, it wouldn't be... It, it, it's not funny. It's not mine, is it? He says he would work on a building site, if only he had the right paperwork. CIB ticket. It's to get on building sites and that. To say that you're capable of working on the site with other people. And you've got to have your health and safety as well. You've got to have that all in one. And that's about £200, I think, roughly. But he thinks the state should foot that bill. The government should give you it. It should be 
there for you, to help you. If they help me get the tickets, well, I have to help myself to get them because I've got to study the farm and I've got to do all the filling in and everything like that. But if I got them, I could go on building sites. It's a door to an oak. So who would pick up the tab, though? The taxpayers? And then you can get more out of it. I could drive shovels, I could drive diggers, I could drive anything if I got, you know, got help. If I get off the unemployment, it's another one off unemployment and I'm not signing on. I won't be claiming anything, so it'll be beneficial for everybody. You should give up your allotment and then go pay for what you need. While John is trying to get the job centre to cough up, in Doncaster, Claire's on income support. But best mate Danielle has to check in with the job centre hey, to get job seekers' hey, allowance. Uh, they're making everyone sign on uh, weekly now. I think it's just a thing that they're doing, you know, for the younger one. I've got to sign on every week. I don't like it, I hate it. After a quick appointment, Danielle struggles to see the point of signing on or she of the upset. job centre. I filmed my booking for nothing. She didn't even look in it. It was quite embarrassing. So I filled it out for nothing. They tell you to apply for so many jobs and then when you do, they don't even look in your book to see if you've done it or not. They just sign you. Yeah, go on, go. Done. So how's that helping you get a job? So they, you don't care about them. <laughs> you better be thankful she's just signing it and not looking. To not see the forgery going on in there. Was there not looking and trying to persuade you to do more and helping you by saying, oh, we'll do this and do that and do that. And, but they don't, they didn't even do anything. I think it was a waste of my time, to be honest. Dan a waste of your time. That's crazy. Danielle has never had a full-time job, but she has been on courses and work placements through the job centre. She had, she had to call off work to come down here. <laughs> I did two weeks at B&M, didn't take me on. Did two weeks at Savers, didn't take me on. I did two weeks at the Hesley course, didn't get that job. So I just keep up trying now. Do you know why should you go like work your ass off to try and do it and butter these and just to get your money every fortnight? I wish it were easy to get a job. I'd love to work and have money coming in and get everything sorted. But you don't even you don't even believe what you're saying. You can't even look in the camera and say that with a straight face. <laughs> Life ain't that easy, is it? If you don't look for so many jobs, you get sanctioned. Yeah, which I think is wrong. Like, now if a caller person went in and said, oh, I don't understand this and I don't understand that. Like, now if a caller person went in and said, oh, I don't understand this and I don't... Did she say if a coloured person went... What did she say? She's wrong. Like, now if a caller person went in and said, oh, I don't understand this and I don't understand that, but I've done this, that and that, just get paid straight away. Her friend, new what she say? mom Claire, is also on benefits, but doesn't want her daughter to follow in those footsteps. I'd like to think in the future, like for Kira, there's going to be plenty of job opportunities out there. So when she's old enough and she's got kids, and, you know, she's not going to be like. Well, ma'am, you got to make sure she thrives to do her best in school, keep building her up, building her character up, and instill great habits in her. And ah. Uh... This might be a little difficult, Me, who's on but I'm hopeful for you, and I wish that for the baby. No, but it's nice to think like that, though, isn't it? To say that there's nothing at the minute for us. Now I've got a child, I'd like to think that there's going to be something for her. They've both lived in Yorkshire all their lives, but say the problems aren't confined to their hometowns. To make this a better country, would you back? I don't vote. This is a t these, this is a terrible look for people on benefits. These are this <laughs> and I, this is on purpose. Channel Five did this on purpose. This is what they got representing y'all right now, and that's bad. This is bad. This is a bad look. If somebody from the future came back and was like, "Dang, what is benefit?" Or like if the world ended and they had to rebuild civilization and they was trying to figure out, hmm, what do we do with the less fortunate? And they seen this video. They're not, <laughs> they're gonna be like, eh. They're just gonna take advantage of us and not do anything to help themselves. Nope. No either, but I know, obviously, if, if None of it had, interests me. Yeah, but if someone had the chance to make this... Who watching the baby? Doncaster, and obviously the whole United Kingdom a better place, would you back? Don't bother me. I live my life how I want. Not how the government tells me. 
It's my life, I'll do it how I want. Obviously, you've got to wear base symbols, but other than that... And Claire believes there may be another reason why she wouldn't get a job, even if she wasn't on income support. Did you know that, like, like 3,000 immigrants in a day? Why aren't they sending, like, 3,000 people of us over to their country? Do you know what I mean? We've letting people... <laughs> What? 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 What did you just say? Port. Did you know that like three thousand immigrants in a day? Why aren't they sending like three thousand people of us over to their country? Well, ma'am, because the immigrants coming to your country are leaving a war-torn country. If you want to go there, so be it. They're coming to get on the same type of time you are. Some of them. Some of them also want a better life for their family. Some of them actually want to work and put effort for it. But you are just... She should have not even just said nothing. This is, these are not the type of comments you keep to yourself. Why aren't they sending like 3,000 people of us over to their country? Do you know what I mean? We're letting people in. Why aren't they sending people back? They should only come for vacation. They, don't, they should move in. I reckon that's what they do, you know, they, they, they decide whether to come to England or not. Pack a bag and then get an house stamp and say, yeah, I'm living here. I'm not going back. <laughs> the cameraman just had to pin to the baby. Like, let's leave some cuteness in because this girl is the epitome of dumb. <laughs> of, of not, not dumb, but ignorant. Ignorant is the word. Over in Bradford, Adele's found a way of making money in spite of her ill health. When I go to people's house, I go, give that, give that, give that. <laughs> and that's how I make money and stuff. Free items in Bradford. Free to good home. So if you click on that, and then it'll just bring stuff up. Like every day I look on this sort of stuff. Like, look at that money there, freestanding pine money, but it's sold, but it would have five. And now I could have sold that for 15 quid on boot sale. Right, look at this, look, free. What's that collection from my uh, toy cooker? That's Manchester's too far. Free electric cooker, need a clean. That's a free cooker. And it's not often you see people who want to give a free cooker away. I can't put here free. With so much free stuff available, she's hatched a plan to top up her benefits. I do car boots, and what I do is I go onto this site here. I just look for, like, bric-a-brac, you know, like, toys, baby things, you know, all that sort of stuff. Because believe it or not, toys sell. and stuff like that don't half sell. And how many kids are at car boots in the morning, you know, and it just gets the apple of attention, doesn't it, for a kid to look, oh, look at that teddy. Every penny <laughs> does count that you can make. And we can go to Morrison's at end of day and get like four pies and stuff like that for them in a pound. You can get bread. Why not top off your electricity, save up for rent? Why are you thinking about pies? It does help me put a bit of food on the table. It helps me pay my gas and electric. And then obviously then I've got £10 to play with whatever I want to do. So it'll save that tenner for a taxi if I need to go anywhere and important. She's discovered her inner entrepreneur. We is a way to make money. Central C will be proud. But it's a shame that you have to go to all this length to do it. But I suppose if you want something, you'll do it, won't you? You know I me? Mean? I could fall in a pile this, of shit. What do you mean, all this length? You're sitting at a computer desk at home. You're good. This is easy. Some come out smelling the roses, me. <laughs> Find all sorts, me. <laughs> 11 miles away, over in Leeds, Steve says the odds of finding work are stacked against him. I'm nearly 60 now, but how do you expect me to find a job when they lay skilled people off? It's the government at fault. The coal fields in England and Scotland. It's nobody's fault. Nobody's taking accountability at all in this show. And Wales. The government didn't do enough to help them. The trouble with the job market in this country is a lot of employers will only employ a foreign workforce because they do work for a cheaper rate than what we would. It doesn't matter where you look, hospitals, garages, building trade, a lot of the workforce is migrants. Steve reckons being in and out of prison for years lengthens those odds even further. Oh, you got a felony record as well. First time I got into trouble with the police, I was about nine. It's too young for anybody to start getting into trouble. Star breaking, arson. Firearms offences, there's all sorts on my record. I'm getting too old to be going into prison. There's no Seriously. clever lads in Nick. All the clever ones are out here because they haven't been caught. 
A lot of people say, oh, it's the parents' fault, that the kids are running wild. Nah, it wasn't my parents' fault. If I did anything wrong, I, got, I used to get a good belt. That's the trouble with the world today. You're not allowed to, not allowed to slap your kids anymore. But despite believing he's a victim of circumstances, he knows some of them are of his own making. You used to run with a few lads. Mm. You have to find a good balance if you if you discipline your children like that. A belt is crazy, but like you got to find like that balance because what that teaches you a child is when something doesn't go your way or you want somebody to do something, what what violence will get it done. Right? <laughs> this is what it's teaching them. You got to be looking at the broader picture, man. If I whip my kid and I tell her you should have did this, you should be, I want you to go do this, and you say no, and then I say, okay, I'm going to give you a whooping, and I whoop you, and then you go do it. That has taught my child, hey, if I want my way, I need to put violence on somebody. So, you know what I'm saying? Every action got a reaction, buddy. You're up in Durham. We all decided to put stupid tats on. I think I was about 15 when I got the first one done. We can get suited and booted. I really be spitting facts on here, and I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, go for an interview. The fact that one. Nah, I don't like that. You, people see your own mere tats on your hands, or any tats on your hands, and you just say, right, not, not bothered, not interested, because they, the, they give the wrong impression. Despite feeling unemployable, Steve still has to keep up with the job centre's rules in order to keep his 72 quid a week benefits. Come on. Come on. The job seeker. If he gets a job, he's definitely making more than 72 a week. He's just... At the moment, you've got me going in every week, which I find a bit tedious, but uh, the ESA sends you a sick note in, and that's it. They don't bother you. I'd rather do it without the job centre if I could help it, but it's obviously just one of them things. I've got to fill that in every week then before I go down. What I'll do, what I did, and any replies I get, I think that myself a waste of time. There isn't any jobs out there. And what jobs there are, I'm not qualified to do. I wonder if he just goes to jobs that he's literally underqualified for. Just like... Like, he, like, I could see him going into a hospital and be like, yeah, I'm here for the doctor's interview. And not getting the job and putting it and saying, hey, I'm underqualified. Coming up, a disaster. But it was a whole to call it. It's early morning in Bradford and an early start for Adele. Knackered like, but there you go, after seven in the morning, not used to early mornings, but there you go. Adele says she struggles to make ends meet on her £980 a month benefits, so she's putting her latest money-making scheme into action. <laughs> it's not something I do every week, but when you just collect a few items, it's good to get rid of some car boot stuff. Loaded with free. Oh, this is real. I remember I seen Dale do this in um, Only Fools and Horses. Stuff she's found on the internet, she's off to a car boot sale. I'm not even if I do 20 quid better than a kicking teeth, isn't it, really? Everything ready, she takes a break. Even though I'm pulling myself and I've got arthritis, I don't car boot, but I'll have to take a chair with me so I can sit down a day. Adele's on the lookout for any potential customer. That dog poo's here, I'll sell him that dog pooper. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and the cash soon starts to trickle in. How much is it? I'll take two pounds for it. Get you some chairs. With sale. Thank you very much, love. Yeah. Cheers, love. Yeah. Yeah. After sale. I ain't gonna lie, she, this, this, her little hustle is kind of clean. It's very much love. Cheers, darling. Thank you. Oh, I'll just give you a back, yeah. Sorry. That's going be a change, innit? It's our love. Thank you. I've made 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, about 25 quid. Call it 30, because I had to pay five pounds for my stall. So it's not been bad, it's been quiet, but I think next week I'm gonna go to a bigger one. 
think she just said that backwards. She said, I made 25 quid. Call it 30 because I had to pay for my stall. You mean call it 20. Why would you add when you're supposed to subtract? While Adele's quids in, there's some potentially good news for John in Selby too. He's been asked to go to the job centre as soon as possible about a vacancy. I'm going to the Dole office to uh, get an application form for uh, a job. Okay, so that's where okay. I've got to go now. Do a willy. The job was right up his street. I was interviewing for different jobs. It was a driver's mate, which I've done sort of things before like that. And it was heavy, you know, moving boxes, heavy lifting, so I've done all that sort of stuff. But there's a problem. John thought he was simply going for a chat at the job centre. Instead, it was a full-on interview with his potential employers. Oh. The thing is, I went in shorts and a T-shirt, so I don't know whether that made any difference or <laughs> what. Oh, what can you say? They never set out, so I didn't know what to didn't know what to say to him really. Covered in paint, yeah, I'd been painting on her, so it was a bit embarrassing really. But I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know you were working. In interviewed. So they said, Oh yeah, it was an interview. I said, Well I didn't when when you when you phoned me up you didn't actually explain that to me, so I just thought it was just going to sign find fill some forms in for jobs. So I didn't, I didn't know. Bro, Bro knew. It's a learning curve, isn't it? While John still claims to be learning, in Leeds, Steve's been trying to get off job seekers and permanently signed on the sick. Finally, his luck might be changing. It's not good news, brilliant news. You closed me job seekers down yesterday. It's been a long battle for Steve to prove he's medically unfit to work. To me, this is a, a victory. To, for people to start actually coming to the stage where they actually realise that there is something genuinely wrong with me. Instead of saying... Bro, it's ecstatic about not having to go to work no more or look for a job. No, he's another blagger. He's just trying to pull the wool over our eyes. There's nothing worse than getting battered from pillar to post in this system. He says it'll also help to take the pressure off him having to look for work in order to get his benefit payouts. The way he's health is... I this is one of the most backwards shows I've ever seen in my life. Kind of actually look for work. People are striving to not work. They just peacefully get their benefits and go on. Me hand, me arm, me chest, me hip. But if I was a horse, they'd have to chew at me. He now doesn't have to look for work and there is no threat of his benefits being pulled. The only part I found stressful was having to trail down here every fortnight and produce evidence of what work you were looking for. He kept putting pressure onto me, saying, oh, well, if you're not looking for work, we can sanction you. But that's not the stressful side of it is. The stressful side is when you lose... Now you're dressed like a benefits cowboy, just... Your benefit. You also lose your council tax allowance, your housing benefit. You've got nothing to live on unless you unless you've got that you go for handouts. Things are starting to go my way for a change. Instead of going for the system, it's actually starting to pay out for me. The, piston, the system was paying you out very peacefully, all it required for you to look for a job. That's it. In Doncaster, Claire and Danielle are off out. Have you made a fact to work with? No. It's your turn. I don't even start that. They're off to the park with Claire's seven-month-old daughter. Yeah. Oh, park in this weather? Look, oh, there's park. Claire's sick of struggling. It is hard living on benefits and looking after a child at the same time. How come y'all got jackets on and a baby, though? To be honest, it's hard living on benefits and not having a kid, though, at the same time. And tired of making it. You be quiet. You be in Spain, Ibiza, Benidorm, chilling. What you talking about? It's hard to not have a baby and live on Benidorm. You chilling. You don't pay no rent, nothing. Meet as a young mum. 
Yeah, but if you think about it, you've got your, you, you've got your money to yourself, whereas I... Exactly. I have to put my money towards what she needs. Yeah, but it's still buying myself stuff, like if I need shoes, coats, obviously my fags. This is unbelievable. Are they listening to... How did y'all friendship develop? Where did y'all find each other? You're perfect for each other. Literally, I know why y'all are best friends. This is crazy what I'm hearing. She said, yeah, but I still got to buy stuff for myself. You know, new boots, new clothes. And don't forget my cigarette. Like, oh, but man. But she's determined to make some changes. That child has changed my life entirely. I didn't realize that a child could change your life, but she has. I want to go back to college and I want to do like hair and beauty and see where I get with that. And hopefully if I like it and stick with it, then I should get a job out of it. And that's what I want to do. I do want to work. I really do. Instead of being sat at home doing nothing all day. No, I'm sweating. She's tired me out. That's what She's knackered me out. What babies do. They tire you out, tricky. John's still looking for work when he's not at the allotment. Yeah. Can't get no better than this. Don't need money to be happy, do you? Cat. Adele is still trying to keep the weight off. I'm gonna look like that bars me. Ten years time, slim and slick. Cat. <laughs> After struggling to get signed. But I wish you the best. Signed off. Steve has some words of wisdom for the younger generation. If I had to go sit somebody down now, it was getting a little bit out of hand. I turn around and say, look. Join the army, join the navy, join the air force, whichever. Learn a trade, do something weird. The, the, that was some of the worst advice that I ever heard. Stay in school, work hard. <laughs> if you find you something that, if you find something that you don't want to do that that you want to do that's not traditional, make sure you go hard at it. One hundred percent in. Don't don't be half in, half out. Go hard for what you want. Don't be like me. Don't be lazy. That's the advice he should be giving. Don't end up like me. Ah, there you go. You got that part right. And Claire is still determined to change her life round and make Yorkshire a happy home for her daughter. I want to be different. I want to be not like everybody else, but stand out for me and my daughter and make sure she knows that to having a job it's the only way to get your money instead of sat on your ass doing nothing. Well, you know, she has... She's looking up the, to your best friend. The people you surround yourself up around is normally the ceiling for you. You need to get some better friends. I wanted to learn and see that. No kizzy. Tell Lily, like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm done.